Hey everyone, and welcome back to part 2 of the Liberated Minds review. Joining me is my awesome Patreon donator, um, George. Hi George, how are you doing? Hi Ben, I'm good, how are you? Yep, doing fine as well. And for those of you who want to join George and do some data packs reviews with me, become my Patreon supporter. Aha! Okay, <laughs> let's begin with Brainstorm. Ooh, this one, charging right out of the gate. Um, it's the Komainu for HB, except with brain damage, and that is nasty. nasty. Oh my goodness, yes. I don't know what Netrunner did to deserve this abomination, but well, now we have brain damage that's not clickable. This is going to take a lot of people for a nasty surprise. Yeah, I love it. I am so happy that it exists. Um, I think it's been kind of a long time that HP got any kind of boost to brain damage decks, so this is really nice to see. Yep. My only reservation is that, that now, from now on when you play against any deck for that matter, you have to consider, could they be running Brainstorm? Do I need a Deus Ex or Mimic out before I can start running? Yes. Um, right. Yeah, and that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's still it's still really good though I think. Oh, it's it's a I don't know. Um, in the best case scenario, I think it's a bit too good because if you get hit for five brain damage with this, that's your starting hand. You right. basically have lost the game. You are almost not recovering from that sort of setback. Yeah, I don't know how you recover from it. Yeah, as opposed to Komainu, where it's a big setback, don't get me wrong, but you can still draw up, you can still recur your cards. With brain damage, you're ending your turn on zero cards each turn. What do you do? You're done. Yep. Yeah, and I think it as a surprise res, um, this is a huge threat. Because if you if you don't have enough cre even if you're using a mimic, um, if you don't have enough credits and the corp has nine, you just really have to be uh, wary of just running into one of these and losing your whole hand to brain damage. Yeah, so I'm kind of happy that it is more or less infection because it costs 4 influence, so a lot of other factions won't think of importing it. But if one day you run into an NEH deck at a tournament without a mimic and they res brainstorm as NEH, you're gonna be so pissed. Yeah, that's gonna be brutal. Yeah. Ultimately, I don't think it's playable in the sense that uh, it's not taxing enough for the res cost. Nine is a huge price to pay. Yeah, I I think that's probably going to be the one reason it won't be completely ubiquitous, but um, yeah, it's still a great card, I think. Yeah, it's really, really good, especially when it catches the opponent by surprise. Very polarizing. Yeah. Either does almost nothing, or it completely wipes the runner dry. Yeah, yeah, it's a good surprise res, I think. This one's more reasonable. Three res, five... Strength, that's pretty good. Yeah, this is a great code gate, I think. Um, because as HB, you're going to have other Bioroid Ice, which has other impactful subroutines. Um, and so this is kind of, it's almost definitely going to be a must break for the runner. Yep. And at the very least, because if you're running a Bioroid deck, you're probably playing Eli. Yep. So, two end run subroutines for three res costs. We all know that that's a bargain any day of the week. Yep. So, yeah, this is, this is going to eat a lot of money, a lot of clicks. <laughs> and a lot of runner. David tokens. <laughs> a lot of David tokens, right. So, yeah, this is... I think this is actually even better than Brainstorm in terms of what kind of decks... How many decks we'll see it in. Yes, I have to agree. And I love the art as well. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. No yep. wonder it made it on the data pack itself. Yeah, exactly, right. Um, Neuronet. This one is a 3-1 agenda, which makes me not want to look at it at all. So please do me the favor and give us the rundown. So I did look at it, actually. So this just says that any time there's a successful run on HQ, you play a side game, and if the runner loses the side game, you give him the cards he accesses. Um, but like you said, it's a 3-1. So... I mean, Sad face. <laughs> right. Um, I actually built a PE deck um, who would be the most likely candidate, I guess, to be running three ones. And um, I really don't think this has any slots. Nope. Not in a PE deck. Realistically, the only deck that would run this is Nisei Division. Because then it becomes quite interesting. 
every single HQ run, it generates you one credit at a minimum. Right. It's like a paywall only on HQ. It's not good, don't get me wrong. But you can do a lot more with that 3-1 agenda slot, but it is something. Right, I agree. It's 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 not the worst 3-1, but it, yeah. Yeah, the effect itself isn't really that good. In fact, as Nisei Division, you're probably just bidding zero every time because, I mean, re- so you force them into your snare. Great, they'll just clear the tag and move on with life. Exactly. So, well, they've they've had a very bad history of printing lots of bad three ones for Jinteki faction, and this is no exception. Yep. What about this one, Jinteki Ice Shatana? This is another uh, enabler for Nisei Division. It's a Sly Ice. It's four to rest, three strength, same as Neuro Katana, but it has two subroutines. First one's pretty useless. Every player gains two credits. Mm, slightly better for the Corp, because Corps tend to be poorer. The next one's interesting. It's a Komainu effect, if the yeah. runner fails the side game. Right, exactly. So the runner has to fail the side game first, and this, this ice costs four to res. Uh, I don't know about this. Yeah. The benefit is that you can get the Komainu effect for one less credit, because um, when you res Shatana, even if you have four credits, it will bring you down to zero. But if both subroutines fire, you gain two credits, you can play the side game. So exactly. That's one nice little benefit. You can always play the side game if the runner doesn't break it. But I don't know. Yeah, it's a mimic range, and that's always a downside. Yeah, and it costs four, so yeah. <clears throat> so, um, does this uh, make Nisei Division playable? Uh, just this card? No. In conjunction with that crappy 3 1 agenda? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, let's move on. I, 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 I tried. I tried. Yeah, we're trying. Oh, this is what we're looking for. Finally, finally, we get the Waylon card that Waylon has deserved for ages. <laughs> this is Puppet Master. It's a 5 3 Waylon gender. When wait, the runner wait. makes a successful run, you can place an advancement token on a card that can be advanced. You can advance your eyes for no clicks. You can advance. Oh, Waylon will love this. But wait, Ben. It's yellow. What? Yeah. It's oh. an NPN 5-3. <laughs> no! I can't believe it either. No. Why? Why must NPN get all the good cards? Why Why must Waylon always borrow their cards from, Waylon, uh, from NBN? And they can't yep. even borrow this agenda. Yep. What a cruel, cruel world. <laughs> it's it'll be okay. There are there are some good Wayland cards coming, just no. maybe not in this pack. Yeah, maybe next cycle. <laughs> yeah, maybe next cycle. I think I've heard a couple things. Yeah, but for now, NBN says no, thank you. I don't need a five three agenda. No, definitely not. Yeah, they are trying to make the theme of advancing, uh, clicklessly advancing cards in NBN work. They have quite a few other cards that do that, uh, like. I forgot the name. Uh, the, yeah, I forgot yeah. the name of the asset that does it. And there's an agenda as well, right? Uh, where the oh, it is an asset that lets you place an advancement. Yes, right. I forgot the name of that. Yeah, I forgot the name of it as well. And also Matrix Analyzer. They really yep. love advancing their cards, but unfortunately, NBN doesn't need that when they have all the fast advance in the world. Who needs to advance? Yeah. I mean, play agendas on the table. I mean, I agree, and they had to have known that those other cards weren't seeing much play when they printed this, so I just... And it's a 5-3, it's terrible. Yep. Now, one interesting thing is that being in the NBN faction, it actually combos with Media Blitz, which is the current that allows you to copy the agenda text of an agenda in the opponent's score area. So, you can run this and reliably get its effect with Media Blitz. So the question then is, is it worth it to import some of the Wayland Space Ice or Advanceable Ice and run this agenda? Uh, maybe. I That would be the only case I could see this. Uh, yeah. But in general, 5-3s are so bad. I mean, there's only, there's only two 5-3s in the game that see play regularly, right? And they're defensive. Right, exactly. So, I, I can't see this being um, impactful. Yeah, I have to agree with you. At the end of the day, if your game strategy relies on feeding your opponent a 
you probably need to find a new deck. Exactly. Yep. All right. So, what about this one? An NBN card? Nope. I have my glasses on. It is yellow in color. Five for five. Code gate because clearly NBN needs more strength five code gates. Yeah. This one's a tracer though, and um, when successful, the runner reveals that grip and trash all cards which cost less or equal to the difference in trace strength. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I I mean it's so as a runner it seems um, unless you unless you have just siphoned them and they're broke, um if you're equal on credits, uh this you're gonna have to break this. Yeah, Probably, otherwise right? it could potentially act as a mini Komainu because it empties your hand. Yeah, I guess yeah, and I guess the other th thing we should mention is this probably is going to be in tagging slash kill decks, right? I mean, are you going to see this in fast advanced decks replacing Archangel or any of those other code gates? Great question. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it fits in killing. I mean, it's not very effective in killing decks because in killing decks you want to kill the runner in one fell swoop with your mid seasons or twenty four seven scotch combo. You can't trigger this on your turn. You can't trigger this willingly. The runner has to stumble into it. And even then, they have time to recover unless they foolishly run last click, in which case they deserve it anyway. Right. That's a good point. So, I mean, the cases where uh, this 5 cost, 5 strength code gate gets deck slots, I don't know. Yeah, I'm on the fence of, on it as well. I mean, yeah. I'll just pay 3 more and get the toll booth any day. Yeah, an Archangel costs one less, has one more strength, and you get to set. You could potentially set them back enormously by putting a card back in their grip. So I think Archangel's better. Yep. Unfortunately, it is a pretty good piece of ice, but it um Ambient's just saturated with so many good code gates right now. Absolutely. Oh, good review. All right. Now another NBN card. This one has a niche though, unlike Waver, which is saturated. This one is the. Corpse Sight's turntable, but it only activates when the runner is tagged. Do you like it? I do like it a lot, and I'm already trying to dream up decks that this could be a part of where you score breaking news mid-seasons them when they steal an agenda, and then just swap their 5-3 with your 2-1. Yeah, that's insane, isn't it? Yeah, so hey, maybe this is a place uh, for Puppet Master and decks that use this. Nah. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, unlike Puppet Master, which uh, unfortunately was printed in the completely wrong faction, exchange of information is in the absolute perfect faction to leverage it on because um, NBN has four 2 1 agendas, three breaking users, and uh, 15 minutes, which means that you can easily find an agenda to swap over with the opponent. Yep, and it's also, of course, it's also the tagging faction. So there are a lot of possibilities. This can... Uh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of possibilities, and I think this is a very strong card. I think it will see competitive play, and that's saying a lot. Yeah, I think it could. Um, the question is if it's going to be more than a one-of. I don't know. Um, because now we've seen kind of the return of the all-seeing eye yeah. as the latest uh, tagging card. Um, That's a good but point. This, this, this could be extremely powerful. I mean... It can. At, at the worst, you're almost always getting at least a uh, two agenda point swing. Imagine if you swap your one pointer for your opponent's two pointer. So yeah. from being down one to two, you're now up two to one. That's a two agenda point swing. That's pretty huge. Yeah. What I think this works best with by far is with Global Food Initiative, which is already seeing a lot of play. So you're swapping from one... Uh, yeah, down one to two. You you swap a breaking news with that global food. Now you're up three to one. That is yep. a three agenda point swing. That's insane. That's an enormous swing. I think the only problem is that you have to tag them in between that. So, and that is where we were talking about Timmy Wong's info refinery deck. It's yep. gonna come into play, and it has all the tools it needs to tag the runner, and it's running all those agendas. All it needs to do is just slot, uh, plop a couple of these in, and it's good to go. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe this could replace closed accounts, so... Yeah. Better watch out. The info yep. refinery is coming from, for you. <laughs> yep. Yep, another good yellow card. Another good yellow card. 
Is Waylon gonna get similar treatment? Let's find out with red tape. Um, first of first of all, I just have to say I absolutely adore the art. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's it is great. A throwback to York. I love it. And the and the flavor text is good as well. Yes, yes. I want I I really want to see the Anox dictionary being printed like the yeah. book of Android. The world, exactly. Yeah. Um. So this one, back to the card, is uh, basically a chum that costs one more to res and has one more strength. Yep. Why do we need another chum? Uh, we don't. Exactly. I don't yeah. think we do. Oh dear. This is not very good, is it? Um. So let's put this side by side with chum. Um. Besides the one extra numbers, um. It also gives one extra strength. So plus three strength instead of two strength. It doesn't deal net damage because it's not Jinteki. It still costs yeah. the same amount of influence. Why would you play this? I don't know because in some situations you could be helping uh, the runner. Um, Very I've good point. Played many, yeah, I've played many games where um, our, my opponent will just have a David on the board. Uh, yes. They haven't found any other breakers, so if you res this, then you're just helping them. I, I don't think it's very good. And not to mention that red tape itself is davidable at 5 strength, so in essence you're giving the runner a lot of choices. Yeah, absolutely, yep. Not to mention that it's positional, like Chum and Inazuma, which see almost no play, for a very good reason. Once you Parasite or Femme or whatever, the innermost piece of ice, red tape does nothing. Yep. That being said, 2 res cost is still a pretty good text for 1 David token, and Blue Sun can always remove the weakness with positional ice, so that's something. Yeah, if you manage to get this as the outermost piece of ice, and they haven't seen the next ice behind it, um, yeah, it's worth. I would say it's worth 2 credits in that case, but my ice positioning never seems to work out that nicely in Wayland decks. Nope, not even with Blue Sun. It's, yeah, <laughs> the number of times where you have a builder or your... Um, positional eyes in your opening hand is way too many. Yeah. Right, so sadly, Wayland Code Gates are not meant to be good until next cycle, so we'll have to wait for Mausolus. Oops, sorry for the spoiler. Now, <laughs> what about this one? Uh, Wayland gets another tutor. They've been getting a lot of tutors this cycle. This one's an operation, and it's their alliance operation. For two credits and an extra click, you get to search R&D for any operation you want and play it, play, paying all costs. The possibilities are endless. What do you uh, make of it? Um, it's the same old thing that costs two more credits um, for the core. But it right? tutors from your deck instead of your heap, which is kind yeah. of an important distinction. It is. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, what kind of cards would you be tutoring for? You could be tutoring for in Wayland your tagging cards, right? So you could have a one mid seasons. You could have one mid seasons and three of these, and then that's kind of like having four mid seasons. Yep, that's a very good starting point. Um, because if you're using a tutor, chances are you're only running a single turn in your deck. Otherwise, you wouldn't yep. need a tutor. And what do you run single turns of? That's cards that you need to spend influence on. So yeah, your mid seasons, your scorched earth. That is something that you look to tutor with. Consulting visit. Yeah, so I I have I have a one of of sea source in my Argus deck, and I already have some decent tutors for it with Atlas counters and the future is now. Yeah, so, and this hampers sea source particularly because it does cost an extra click, which means yeah, you is, cannot follow it up with double scorch. Yeah, this is really bad for sea source. So I think in the one case of using it for mid seasons. Um, if a person is running a two sea source deck, maybe they switch now to one mid seasons and three of these. Possible. Um, yep. It's possible, right? And but yeah, people you can... seem. Go Sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say, but people seem to be pretty prepared for mid seasons these days. Oh yeah, that is true with the film critics and what have you running around. Yep. Um, you can also use it to get Salon's hospitality. It's not the worst, although you can already do that with Mabet City Hall. Yep. Um. Uh, yeah, and on the fast advance side, biotic labor doesn't help because you get an extra click for losing a click. Yeah, so, no, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, so in general, this is has very limited usage. Probably mid seasons is the way to go. Yep, agreed. And fun fact: if you use this to tutor another double, say celebrity gift, you will have just wasted your entire turn. Well done. Yep. Yeah, you, you can't use it for interns, so. 
That would well, that would be another good use for it. But like you said, you can't do that. Uh, you can, you can, but um, I mean, you can. You will burn yeah. your entire turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Um. Mm, 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 mm. I like ice cream, and this one screams yummy to me. <laughs> Agree. Um. <clears throat> So basically, this sort of ice is screaming, "Hey, super modernism was fun. Let's bring rush back, rush decks back into the scene." And at zero cost, we now have a gear check that is actually has actually quite a lot of use. So being at zero to rest means that you can actually gear check a runner out, uh, even if you're siphon or vamp. And yep. the most natural comparisons to make with vanilla are Chimera which costs two more to res and de reses automatically. You also compare it to Paper Wall, which seems like a straight up upgrade, aside from the one extra strength that Paper Wall has, but Paper Wall gets demolished instantly from being broken. So all in all, Vanilla just seems like a very solid piece of ice. I agree, and as you mentioned Paper Wall, I am swapping three of these immediately for the Paper Walls in my Argus deck. Ah, you're running Paper Wall in your Argus deck. Yeah, for exactly the reason you said, it's a rush deck. Uh, the paper walls there is a simple gear check, and this has uh, way more upside than paper wall. Yeah, unfortunately, there's one very big downside to vanilla, and that is, is zero strength, which means that it can be parasited on the same turn that it's rest. That's so true. it would be way stronger if it were one to rest and one strength. I wish there was a piece of ice that existed that had that stats. Yeah, uh, it's it's an instant parasite target, but it's par uh paper wall dies on the turn that it's broken anyway. So I don't think I still think it's better. Speaking of one strength barriers, surely there are more one strength barriers that your August deck could be running. There are some, yeah. Well, any reason you're running paper wall over those? <clears throat> I have ice wall as well. Ah, so you have a lot of. Cheap gear checks. Yeah, I have three ice wall and three paper wall, and two miramadis are my barriers. And <clears throat> do you just uh, scoop up your deck and leave in frustration when your opponent plays fouls on you? <laughs> well, that's what everybody does these days, don't they? Um, fair, fair news. <laughs> no, I mean um, it's not supposed to keep uh, a runner out for a significant portion of the game. It's just supposed to keep them out. Uh, long, just long enough in the initial turns to get to four or five points, um, which happens quite a bit because people are not too interested in running everything against Argus, especially once they hit the first snare. Um, so yeah. I, it, the the gear check ice does work very well on the deck, and sure. for decks like that, I think vanilla has a place. Yeah. I just feel that it just came a bit too late because now with Faust um, dominating the party, yes, um, these gear check—I mean, playing super modernism and uh, all these cheap gear check eyes that are not taxing—isn't very appealing anymore. Sadly. Yep. Yeah, it just basically becomes a shell game at that point instead of um, yeah, exactly. Gear check them. Yeah. But well, glad to hear they are still um, going at it because I do really like Argus super modernism. Um, if only Employee Strike was a bit less played. So hopefully yep. we'll see some people revive Vanilla just as you do. And that brings us to the end of the pack review. So, all in all, how do you feel about the Liberated Mind? Which cards stand out and what do you think of it overall? Uh, so the, um, the HB Ice I think is very good, very interesting. Um, on the Corp side, I think that's probably the ones that I'm most excited for, and then uh, information exchange, exchange oh, yes. of information. That one's fun, yep. And then on the runner side, Rebirth and the Turning Wheel um, are pretty solid, and the rest of them seem just, as you said, just meant for combo wombo decks. Yeah, I have to agree. The corp side seem to have came out, uh, came out on top this pack. Um, yeah, the runner cards just scream wombo combo to me. Um, most of them. In fact, it's the neutral cards that are uh, doing the heavy lifting. And a lot of these are, pardon the pun, vanilla cards. Cards like Turning Wheel, which is more R&D and HQ accessors. Very vanilla effect. Um, yep. Ravana, just a very vanilla bioroid with extremely good stats. Yep. Yeah, a lot of these cards are just um, 
ordinary cards that we'll probably see a lot of play, just like Cobra, just like Mamba Temple. Yeah, which is ironic because they, they do seem to be trying to do a lot of different things with the game, but the cards that always end up seeing the most play are the ones that are just solid vanilla cards. Yeah, although exchange of information will be really interesting and I'd like to see how that will shape out. Sure, yeah, me too. I can't wait to start trying it out. Can't wait Especially... to um, conquer one hidden objective to get a news team on my score area as the corp. That should oh. be pretty fun. <laughs> That'll be the day. Yep. So, anything else to add about this pack? No, that's it. Just thanks for having me on. I had a lot of fun. Yep, and thanks for taking, out, taking the time to join me on this pack. Uh, very ap appreciated your insect insight a lot. Boy, tongue twisters. Mouth is getting dry. <laughs> Gotta end it here. Thanks everyone for watching and happy net running. See you.